Welcome everybody to Do the Work, our um, series on the educator's room where we talk about all things education. Mm -hmm. And this is our series where we're talking a little bit about research and finding those research studies that we think are super helpful to educators and to um, just all out around the country. And we actually found a, a research study that really got us thinking at the end of last year. Um, and it was about the effects of learner generating highlighting versus instructor provided highlighting on learning. Um, it was really a meta-analysis with Dr. Hector Ponce um, from the University of Santiago of Chile. And we are really happy because right now we have him with us. And so before I go any further and talking about this uh, research study, um, Dr. Ponce, can you give us a little bit your background, how you kind of got started into research, and just anything that the, our audience needs to know? All right, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, um, yeah, well, I started some uh, many years ago now on uh, educational technologies, basically, um, developing uh, pieces of software that uh, I thought at the time could uh, improve learning. But uh, without doing the experiments, I didn't know if those um, technology would improve learning or not. So I started doing some experiment on how to improve reading comprehension, basically, um, implementing some uh, um, uh, learning strategies like uh, graphic organizers. And uh, so those visual elements that can be used to improve reading uh, through basically reorganizing the information. So mm. I started doing that well, many years ago and uh, doing some uh, basically experiment uh, in some schools here in Chile. And, um, and also, well, some years ago I met Professor Dr. Rich May at the University of California. So we started working together on uh, analyzing several uh, uh, learning strategies like highlighting, note-taking, um, graphic organizers, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and several of those uh, um, uh, learning strategies. And uh, so we published some, uh, some of those results. I can maybe show you there um, on our next slide. So this is the latest one, so just some select publications. And uh, you can see like uh, what happened when you add graphic organizers into uh, a lesson, uh, a live lesson. So we did that uh, study. And also did some study on highlighting and uh, note taking to using um, uh, eye tracking technologies. So trying to understand how uh, students process the information, okay? So like, give me, let me give you an example. Like when you are reading and uh, if you highlight information, you read following certain patterns. But if you read the same text and you ask one of the students to use a graphic organizer to uh, not only uh, read, but also to paraphrase the information into a graphic organizer, the reading pattern is different. So we could see that using the eye tracking technology. So that's the way I've been working on uh, uh, examining how this uh, very, you can see some very basic uh, uh, study or learning strategies uh, that can uh, help you uh, on uh, on reading, on, on, on improving the reading process, and also leading you or leading the students to improve uh, on memory, on retention, and also on comprehensions of, of, of the text. So that's, that's, I can maybe, I don't know, maybe I was, I went too fast on that, but <laughs> that's basically what, what I do, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Francesca, I can't hear you. Um, it's really interesting that, you know, you talk about using these things to help with reading comprehension, because as we have people come on um, 
watching now, many people, that's one of the things in the United States is we've really tried to kind of look at what helps kids with comprehension. And so this idea that when you're talking about, you know, we tried these different things, whether it's graphic organizers, um, to see if it did, you know, many of us think, especially in the United States, where we are in a testing culture where people are taking these standardized testing. This is like at the forefront right now in April, going into May tomorrow, teachers are getting ready to go into classrooms and technically kids comprehension ability, kids ability to um, read text is going to be super important. So it's, it's really interesting to me to hear about this and to say, you've studied this from as far as 2014 around what does this do? Um, And so I have to ask, you know, looking at your study, you know, from 2014, where you talk about highlighting a graphic organizer study aids for learning, expository text. What did like from all of these different these six different um, ways of looking at comprehension and how kids learn and how kids read? What are some of the and, and before we get into this study that we're talking about now, what are some things you've learned previously or have been lifted up in your research about how kids read and about how it helps them in their learning? Yeah, well, that's, that's a very interesting question. We, we look at that uh, with the eye track. The eye track is very interesting technology because it allows you to observe how people are reading. Okay, and if they change the reading pattern, how you ask, you ask them to use a, a very specific uh, a learning technique, like highlighting. Like for instance, let me, I, I have an example here, maybe I can show you to, let, let's see this uh, particular example here. This is a, a text we have used in some experiments. Uh, and this is about steamboats. And in, in, in the first part of the text, it says about the Eastern style staying boats and the Western styles, okay? Now, you can read that in a very linear way, okay? You can read it there, or you can read the text, like for instance says, it's just a comparison between two type of steamboats, okay? Now, after the first reading of the text, you can see that there is a comparison being made, okay? Now, some students will realize that just read the text, okay, in a very linear way without the intention to, or maybe they don't realize that the comparison is being made between two type of steamboats. Now, how you see that with the eye tracker that they are not making well, you don't know if they are, they are not making the comparison. You just have to infer that they are not making the comparison. Maybe they are doing it, but they are very fast at doing it. Okay, uh, it's because they don't go back to the, they don't read between part of the text. For instance, in this case, I'm going to show you a text which has been highlighted. So you can see here, you can highlight the Eastern style and the Western style. So you read the first, the, the first time you read the text. So the second time you read the text, you can see well, Eastern style, Eastern style steamboats. Okay, it says something about that, but he uses, okay, some elements to make the comparison. Okay, so it operated in some rivers, the Hudson River. It operated it in other rivers. So there is a comparison being made. We talk about the holes, okay, which were deep, flat. So with that tracker, we were able to see if the students were making the comparison as they read the text, because you had to go back into the first part of the text to make the comparison between the second part of the text. Okay. This is something that we realize in some of the experiments. So when you use the highlighting technique, usually the students don't do that unless you train them to do it, okay? Unless you tell them that first they have to uh, 
figure out what is the structure of the text, whether it's a comparison being made, whether it's a cause and effect being described in the text, whether it's a narrative, okay? So the first things to do is to understand the type of text you are reading, okay? After you understand the type of text you are reading, you can start using some of these techniques. It will be much better to use these techniques after you understand the type, the structure of the text. That's, that's the, basically the, the elements of, or the things you can do when you are maybe teaching how to use these particular um, techniques. Okay. This is one example I can give you about um, uh, the type of work we have been doing in, 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 in our lab. I, I can hear you, uh, Francesca. So. I put myself on mute because, I, guys, I have a huge dog, 100-pound dog that barks at a leaf running across the thing. Okay. So I didn't want to interrupt. Um, question about, in Chile, what is the education scene like? We know in America that we are very test-heavy. We know that many times, um, historically, we have found that kids are not being taught um, evidence-based ways on how to read and then how to take that skill and become stronger readers because teachers are having to try to keep up with this elusive test and this uh, and the things that are happening with that. So knowing that, can you set the stage for what the learning is like in Chile and how, like, are these things being taught there or do you guys have standardized testing? What does that look like? Uh, I think we follow very much uh, the approach that yeah, you follow. We have standardized tests at uh, different uh, levels of education, like four graders are, okay. uh, yeah, I think it's the first, the first grade, yes, it's four graders are um, tested. Uh, all the schools are tested in Chile, uh, four, six, and uh, eighth grade. And in high school, that would be uh, 10 grade. So there are many, many standardized tests uh, being, uh, up, uh, being used in Chile. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like yours. And uh, the difficulty with that process is that uh, many schools uh, work very hard to train the students on passing those tests, uh, which uh, in some way had have made the system very competitive because in Chile it's not like a, I don't know the whole system in the US, but I know a little bit about California. Here, you can, as parents, you can choose uh, where or which school to send your kids, okay? So they can, you can live in one place and send your kids very far away because it's, it's, it's like a very um, free market system. So parents can choose where to send the, the, the kid to school. And, um, and it's not... Uh, Although it's free, you don't have to pay. Uh, the schools are run by not, some schools are run by uh, local authorities like uh, municipalities, but many of the schools are um, run by private organizations. Uh, around 40% of the schools in Chile, 40, 45% of the schools in Chile are run by private organizations. So it's very competitive, so they compete uh, to get the students into the schools. Although uh, the, this same standardized system, uh, test show that there's no much difference between the school run by the municipalities and the schools run by this uh, private organization. So um, we, we don't see clearly the advantage of having this um, uh, type of uh, organization from the schools. Go ahead, 
That's interesting. And so I guess this gets, leads us into, you know, the, the meta analysis that you did around learner generated um, highlighting and teacher generated highlighting. So can you talk to us a little bit, because we got lots of feedback from our audience about kids who come into classroom and they highlight everything. Like if you tell them to highlight something, they highlight everything or the teacher has to say, highlight this. This is important. This is important. So Let's talk about, thank you, you have the slide, uh, popular study and learning strategies that you found through your research for getting kids to comprehend what they read. Yeah, some, 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 <laughs> some studies have been done uh, indicate that uh, the, the most popular <laughs> uh, study strategies is rereading. You read the material several times. That's not the most popular one. Okay, uh, but however, it's not it's not it's not the most effective one, of course. And uh, and the second most popular one is highlighting. Maybe you can see the students uh, at school, university, they all highlight some part of the text. That's is very common. Even nowadays, you can see software like a wall or any software has the option to highlight text, um, PDF files also. You can see a function there to highlight a uh, text. This is very common, very popular uh, learning strategy. But there are others like note-taking, outlining, flashcard. You can see there are several other type of uh, learning strategies, which are also uh, quite popular, uh, quite common in, in educational settings. So what happened uh, when I was uh, working on a, I was, uh, Working on a on, on a study before the pandemic on on highlighting, I was um, planning to do an experiment on uh, how to improve a little bit highlighting, like uh, using colors. We are looking at whether adding colors to the highlighting would improve uh, the use of the technique. Okay, but the pandemic arrived, so we couldn't do any experiment. Uh, we were in Chile. We were not allowed to go anywhere, <laughs> uh, so we we're teaching from uh, from 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 home, and uh, so with my team, uh, we were uh, downloading several papers on on highlighting, and uh, we realized that uh, there were no studies or or not uh, systematic studies on highlighting. Uh, and usually highlighting was uh, regarded as a, as a not, not, not very effective technique. And even some authors, uh, some researchers uh, suggested that uh, highlighting should not be used in educational environments because it was not very effective. So, but there was no meta-analysis, there were no systematic review on that. So we saw the opportunity to do a, a meta-analysis on, on highlighting. So that's the way we started uh, working on, on. So this is the first part. So highlight is very popular and there was no uh, research or meta-analysis on highlight. So that, that's, that was the starting point, okay? And uh, so we collected several publications. I don't know if you know the process of uh, doing a meta-analysis, but when you do a meta-analysis, you have to, uh, collect uh, all possible publications, okay, so on, on or articles have been published. Uh, they have to um, uh, report experiments with a control group. So that must be a control group uh, and an experimental group. And in this case, the experimental group is the use of highlighting and the control group could be like rereading, like uh, students are asked to just study the text or reread uh, the text. That's, that's basically, so there are two groups, one experimental and one control group, at least one, and one okay? That's, that's the basic thing that has to be, has to be um, uh, published. And uh, that's the way we started with this uh, particular uh, text. So the report, in many of these uh, papers, they uh, 
they discovered that uh, in general, the students uh, highlight too much or they do not highlight the correct text. Like uh, sometimes instead of highlighting the main ideas, they highlight maybe supporting ideas or not very relevant ideas in the text. So that was a very common finding uh, in the in the in in some of the papers. But on the other hand, there were some uh, studies that uh, showed that highlighting was better than not highlighting. So it was better to highlight that not highlight. Okay, even. Uh, uh, even if the student did not highlight very well, it was better that not highlighted. So that was that's something that uh, we found in several publications. So there was a kind of tension in the in 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 this uh, area between um, recommending recommending the use of highlighting or not. So some some uh, reviews recommended the use of highlighting and other reviews did not. So we wanted to clarify that particular issue, whether it was uh, a good idea to use highlighting or it was not a good idea. So that's the reason we uh, did this particular uh, study, okay? And um, so that's my, maybe the, the introduction I can follow if you want to continue with this. Um, Oh, no, I think this is interesting because some of the the complaints where you talk about, you know, the kids just highlighting anything, all American teachers can tell you this is what happens. Most times, unless you have a student who, in my experience as an educator, unless you have a student who just naturally knows what to look for when they're reading, many times the kids are just highlighting anything and they're not, it's not really sticking with them the, to learn the material. So to hear that that's happening, um, you know, in your country is very interesting. So I'd love for you to talk about, you know, highlighting was the most popular one. And then what about the other ones that you saw through that? Well, uh, it usually happens that the other ones are, are, are better than highlighted, okay? And that we just finished a, a, another meta-analysis on outlining and outline is, uh, is superior to highlighted, but outline is more difficult for the students to, to, uh, 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 to work with. So they have to go through a longer training process, okay? That's, that's something that they have, to allow, they have to elaborate more than highlight, because highlighting is so easy, okay? You just use <laughs> a marker, and there is no, it seems that there is no effort on using highlighting, but any of the others requires more effort. And, uh, and if it requires more effort in general, it means that there's more elaboration. And uh, if there is more elaboration, it will improve not only memorization, which is relevant, but also comprehension. That, that's, that's uh, the, the both basically go together, okay? And um, we have found, like for instance, uh, using mapping like graphic organizers much superior than using note taking or highlight. So note taking highlight in a, in the same category. Okay, they are not very effective. Usually, people like note taking and highlighting are very similar in the sense that when people take note, particularly from lectures or from a lesson. They usually don't take the right notes. This also has been studied a lot about uh, note taking and, and, and highlighting are very similar in a sense of, in terms of uh, uh, um, the effectiveness of uh, both strategies. Yeah, that's really what I can say about uh, highlighting. So although it's very popular, <laughs> it's one of the less effective. But it can be effective. So that, that's interesting. That's what we found is that although it's usually not very effective, but it doesn't mean that it's not effective. 
okay? That, 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 that's, we found in our meta-analysis that although it's not very effective, but it's still effective. So if you uh, teach it correctly, it can be very effective, okay? I think that's, that's, that's the main message from our studies that it can be effective. Okay, that, that's that's the main, and that's the what's the research show in general, is that it could be uh, an effective strategy and easy to use. That's that's the main the main the main point. It's not the best, of course, but it can be effective. It's it's interesting you said that that it can be effective. What did you find? As we talk more about the learner generated and the teacher generated, what are some of the strategies? And you might have this in your next slide about what are some of the things that we can do to make it as effective as we can, or just go. Okay, go ahead. I think I think you were going to get. Yeah, to okay, this. okay. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a few things about that. We, yeah, just to make sure that we we in in this particular research we 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 uh, search uh, the the whole literature looking for articles on 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 uh, highlighted we ended up with 36 which is not a lot if you realize that we we uh, the first study uh was from Matthews 1938 okay so that's the first time we found the first ex experimental study so if you see there are many, uh, uh, so many years, but there are many experimental studies uh, looking at highlighting. So this is a, just to maybe you don't, if you all don't know, don't know very much about, this is the effect size. An effect size which is positive means that highlighting was better than non-highlighting, like just reading. Like the first Matthew found a negative effect, okay, of highlighting. But some other study found a positive effect, but it's very small. And this one is a little bit larger in this case. So this is the type of data we recollected to do the meta-analysis, okay? Now, uh, what's the, what's the, the, the in, 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 in meta-analysis, we usually use the point four as a cutting point to see if something is effective or not effective. It's not, this, this is a, there is nothing like a, uh, it's not like a boiling water, you say, well, it's boil at 100 degrees Celsius, okay, in talking Celsius. This is more about what had happened with other studies in the past, okay? So this is a famous author, uh, Hattier, who put all the uh, possible uh, interventions you can uh, do at the school level and found that 0.4 is the cutting point. So more than 0.4 will be effective and less than 0.4 is less effective, but it's a still effect, okay? And minus uh, zero here is not effective. So what happened? In this, the learner generated highlighting. This learner generated highlighting means that uh, in the studies, the students were asked to highlight text. That's the instruction given to the students. So we're given highlight text, and the control group was given the instruction to read the text. Sometimes were short text, sometimes were long text. So there are many, many, the, the variety of studies, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, there are many different types of studies, but the basic instruction was highlight the text and the control group just read the text or study the text for maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, okay? Sometimes uh, several lessons uh, were used to, to study or sometimes just in one lesson. So there, there are a lot of different type of studies. So what happened? This is the learning outcome. We also look at only at memory and comprehension, which is a very standard type of uh, 
uh, testing in this case. So usually in this type of experiment, after the students are asked to read, uh, they are tested. So, and after the students are asked to highlight, they are also tested, it's called a post-test. So the post-test here, memory and comprehension. So this is the number of study, uh, students participating in the different experiments, this is the total number. 12 means the number of effect sizes, like for instance, in one study, it could be maybe more than one effect size. So the results here indicate that point 36 was the average in this case. Okay, so it's less than it's less than 0.4, but it's close to 0.4. Okay. So on average, it was not that bad if you ask the students to uh highlight text. But for comprehension it was not very good. Okay, so in line with previous research, it seems that just asking the students to highlight, they will remember more, but it doesn't mean that they will comprehend more, okay? Yeah, by just reading the text. This is the one of the main conclusions of our meta-analysis, okay? And at the college level, you can see also there are difficulties. College students also have difficulties improving on, uh, yeah, using highlighting, but it's still 0.39, it's just there, okay, on the boundaries of uh, being an effective technique. But at the school level, you can see here, on average, it's not very effective, okay? I think that was our main, uh, uh, result from our, our meta-analysis is that, yes, highlighting can be effective, okay, but only for retention, okay, for memorization of the material. I think that's, that's for learner generated, but now let me see here. But if you, we found very few studies that look at training. So, if you train the students on highlighting, we found very few, but just four studies. You can see here the, um, the, the effect can be very large. So training students how to use the highlighting technique can be very effective. So, but there are few studies. So with, with more studies, we, we may find we don't know if that tendency is right or not. We found just four, okay? And now if you combine highlighting with other learning strategies, like you ask the students to highlight and later on use a graphic organizer or post questions, okay? Interrogate the, um, the, the, um, the text. It can also be very effective, okay? And this is very surprising. It's like a, if you ask the students, this is an experiment that have been done. So the students are asked to highlight the text and after maybe a week or two weeks, they are asked to review the highlighted text. This is not very effective, okay? Because they just go into the part that were highlighted, but they maybe they were not well done, they were not good highlighting. So it's not very effective, okay? So highlighting is effective at the moment you use it, but if you review the text that was highlighted, it's not very good, okay? That's not very effective. That's also, we found that, okay? And also it's not very effective when you read a text that was highlighted by somebody else, if you read it, you won't uh, improve on memory on comprehension tests. But also there are uh, papers on uh, publications on, on, on that type of um, uh, um, issues as well, okay? 
That's really so that's on, 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 yeah. I just want that's really interesting when you talk about that it matters the from the time period of when you highlight the text and it's used in addition to these other things. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, so go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying I thought it was really interesting because this is you know, sometimes we've gotten away with this because if you talk about um, technology and kids on computers and they're learning from computers, um, yes, they can highlight, you know, using special programs. But for me, my mind is turning because I'm thinking about the need for students to have, well, let me not even go there. Did you guys find that it, it was that this was the same if they were using computers or technology or is this with traditional books, I'm highlighting, I'm taking notes, I'm using graphic organizers, pen in hand or pencil in hand? Both, both. We found both type of uh, um, uh, publications. There's no difference between uh, highlighting text on the computer or highlighting text on, on, on paper, right? No, no, no. We didn't find any, any difference on that. And uh, some of the stuff we have done is on the computer, and um, we have asked the students to highlight text uh, directly on the screen or and using graphic organizers also on the computer. So uh, that kids now, you know, are, are very familiar with technology. So that's not, not, not the problem for them. And um, so we didn't see any, any, I don't remember now any study uh, looking at the differences between using highlighted on the computer or using highlighted on, on paper. So. I don't remember. Maybe there are some, but I don't remember now if if, we, if there are any of those. Okay. Now uh, let me show you the other one. This is the instructor provided highlighting. This is what's very interesting. Is that if the teacher or the instructor uses highlighting, uh, assuming that say say highlighting was uh, done correctly, uh, it has a very uh, good effect size is 0.44, okay, for memory and comprehension. So if you're teaching the students and you show a text, maybe a scientific text, which are sometimes difficult to understand, and you highlight the elements you want the students to remember, the student will remember it, okay? So that's, that's the styles are showing that. So, for the instructor to use highlighting, okay, according to this uh, meta-analysis, is an effective teaching strategy in this case. Okay, and uh, there are many experiments. We found twenty-one. Maybe there is a little less of uh, publication, but twenty-one effect sizes here, so that we can see the average is more than 0.4, in a sense that. It's an effective uh, teaching strategy in this case. And it's for both, for college students, and also K-12 uh, students too. And um, so that's, that's also uh, an interesting uh, finding uh, from our study on, on, on highlighting. Okay, so maybe that's a, a, a good recommendation for teachers, uh, just highlighting. Uh, when you are teaching something, and uh, people with or students will uh, maybe and, and explain to them why you are highlighting that part of the text, and they will maybe use the technique properly when they are also highlighting their own text. That's really interesting, and you brought up some good points um, about you know learning the per making sure kids know the purpose and the the time for when they highlight. Um, question about, you know, you guys did this meta-analysis. What is next in the research around learner-motivated um, highlighting? Like, what, what's, or what's, the re what's the next research that you're thinking about from this study that you didn't really get to explore that you feel like is next to really understand how kids can better comprehend text? Well, there's some, some elements that uh, are the same... Uh... Uh, literature we review uh, are suggesting is that uh, we need to look at uh, training 
uh, uh, how to train the students properly on how to use these techniques. Oh. Uh, that's something that uh, need to be examined uh, deeply. Oh. Uh, also, uh, there are some uh, issues on uh, who uh, who benefit more from these techniques are the um, high achievers or lower achievers. So that's something that uh, we need to understand more also. Uh -huh. um, there is some so some elements on 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 the technique because highlight is so general. It's, it's yeah. not you can, you can highlight anything. Uh, there is no there is more research to be done on uh, like how to highlight given the structure of the text. Like if you have uh, expository text, yes. how to highlight those type of text. Nice. You have narratives, how to highlight narratives. You have more complex type of text, how to highlight those texts. So in a sense that before highlighting, the students have a purpose on the highlighting. It's not just start highlighting anything they find interesting. First set the purpose of highlighting, uh, given the type of text they are reading. Mm -hmm. And after that, looking at how to approach the use of the highlighting techniques. We need to do more research on that. And um, what I'm looking now uh, is uh, how to improve, if there is an improvement, we don't know yet. Uh, usually here in Chile, it's very common that uh, elementary school students use different colors to uh, highlight their yeah. text, okay? Yeah. They, they, they like it very much, okay? Yeah. And uh, we're looking at, well, if they learn how to use different colors, do they improve or not? Oh. Or maybe they get more confused. I yeah. Don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. About using the highlighting, but they they like it. When, when you go to school, elementary school here, they're all yeah. with uh, yeah. different markers with different colors, and they like it very much. Okay, yeah. they have a. So the question is, how do they process the information? Do they mm. improve the processing of of that uh, text or not? Mm. That's something that we need to to do also, and also. Uh, there is something here we, we also, in, in our study, we have found that uh, there are some students who are, even they are in fourth grade, uh, they are not uh, reading uh, the proper speed. Oh. Sometimes they are reading, uh, they are very, they are, they are still learning to read. Okay. And uh, in those cases, we don't know if it is uh, uh, recommendable to start using this uh, technique. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if, and also we have found uh, students in our uh, studies, uh, uh, they are just even understanding a complete sentence, it's difficult for them. Mm. Okay, at full grade. So yeah. I think that there's something happening at that level. Yeah. I'm not an expert on, on, on reading comprehension. So maybe there's some other elements being involved there. And using the, this particular technique may not be effective. So even, even if they are effective, maybe for that particular group, yeah. may not be effective to just highlight and you know, or or, or filling a graphic organizer or anything, any any of those those particular techniques. Okay. That's really interesting because you know, especially when you talk about some of the follow up around, um, does this benefit more high achieving students or students who are struggling? Um, the color of highlighters, you know, this is really as we go into one of the reasons we started this series was because many times in the classroom you know certain things through experience. But the research is really important to hear the research and to know what's happening in the field, um, in the research, so that you can use it in the field. And so I think 
listening to your study and listening to some of the things that how you guys did it and what you guys learned is really interesting for teachers, especially as we go into the season where students are studying for AP exams or for final exams, what really works and what should we use? Now, I know you have a couple of more points you want to make. I want to let you get through those because guys, please put your comments in, put your questions in the comments because we want to know, I'm sure for his research, he wants to hear from teachers. What have you guys noticed about how your kids use highlighting? Do they do better when you tell them what to highlight or do they do better when they're highlighting themselves? So put your questions in and I, I want you to get through um, your last couple of slides because you have some really interesting research and data that you used. No, no, I, I don't, I, I, it's in, on, on the paper. I, I didn't uh, uh, put that information on, on, on the slide, but I remember now that some elements that we also analyze on our study was um, when you ask, there are some experiments uh, that uh, have been done on inappropriate highlighting. So students have been asked to read text that has not been properly highlighted. And they have a uh, measure memory and comprehension. Uh, and it's amazing, it's very detrimental to the students when they read something that has not been properly highlighted. Why is that important? It is important because sometimes students, uh, particularly college students, sometimes uh, they borrow material from other students to study. And that like a, a textbook, for instance, and that textbook has been highlighted previously. Uh, if that textbook has not been properly highlighted, the student will focus their attention on the highlighted text. So it is worse <laughs> to read uh, a text that has not been properly highlighted than just reading the text without highlight. Okay, that's also. An interesting, uh, uh, we found those um, studies that were interesting and they also, uh, um, we did that analysis also on, on, on our uh, paper, okay. That's really important for us to know. Um, I just got a question in our inbox. They wanted to know, um, this study is very interesting for them. They teach middle school students. Have you done any, they wanna know the, the grade level of the kids that you guys look, that were in the analysis that you look like. Was it, did it span all K-12 or was it a certain grade level? Uh, let me see. Um, what, what this for learning generated highlighting, you can see there are very few are only are six effect sizes. I don't remember the number of studies. Let's assume there are also six, okay? So there aren't many. So that's also an interesting uh, uh, finding here is that although we know about, or we are discussing, and some review also discussed the effectiveness of this type of strategies, but they are based on many studies. Okay, so this is with the learner generated highlighted, and uh, I think there are more instructors, no, on also six. So in total, there are 12 uh, studies on using highlighting with K-12. I don't remember now the grade of the students. I know there are some four graders, six graders, and high school students, but you can, if you just distribute those 12, you can see that it could be any, but not many are uh, focused on particular grades. And, um, and most of the studies are done with college students. You can see that many colleges. This is a, for researchers, it's easier uh, to work with uh, students at the same university where uh, the researchers work at, so that's, that's the main reason, okay? 
And um, yep, that, that's that's. And so what somebody, yeah, and that's really interesting. Somebody else had a follow up question, and they wanted to know: Do you think that this was were the analysis done on schools in the United States? You, they heard you mention California, or were these mainly schools um, in Chile? Uh, no, no. This is studies are from. Uh, let me see. You can see this is studies Matthew Claire. Uh, all these authors are made from from uh, from the from the U.S. So studies done in the U.S. Some studies done, uh, were done in Europe. Okay, very few, very few studies uh, from other part of the world. Like uh, well, maybe two or three in Chile were well, our studies. Maybe one or two in Spain, but no more than that. Okay, so and all, all of course. All of the paper were published in English, so it would be difficult to analyze paper maybe written in German or Chinese for us. So that was uh, our uh, one of our uh, main main uh, um, search um, elements. There was uh, to look for papers published in English and in journals, basically. Okay, that was because uh, it means that the quality of the studies uh, is a good one. And that, that's that's main, the main reason. But yeah, main, main, I think basically the studies were done in most of them in the US. The last question that I have is really about um, they're really interested to read the rest of your research and they want to know how to get in contact with you to get those studies. They said some of the studies they're looking at, it looks like you have to pay is, do you have a link to your website where they can read some of your studies? Um, because they really want to introduce this in their leadership team meetings as they talk about how to change how students learn. Yep. Uh... This is my email address. Yes, send okay. me an email. Okay. And uh, I will send you all the papers that you you I, I have published. So <laughs> I have papers on on graphic organizers and highlighting. So, so if you want to have them, I can send you. That that's not the problem. Absolutely. Now, when you think about you, you gave a, you gave some of the areas that you talked about that you would do. You think there could be some more additional studies, whether it's you know does highlighting. Will we have the same results if it's high performing children or students who struggle? Um, talk about the color of highlighting. What do you see in the next five years? Where do you think this research will be used? Is your hope that it'll get more into schools and with practitioners? Or what is your hope that this will lead further into? <laughs> that's that's a, um, an interesting question. Uh, we usually do the research, we publish them, and uh, how it goes into practitioners is something that uh, I've never thought about that <laughs> until now that you contact me. Uh, usually uh, people uh, like, I did this meta-analysis, other people do other meta-analysis that include our research, so look at uh, trying to summarize the research has been done. Sometimes uh, some researchers publish, publish books with the main results. That's the way it goes into uh, teacher training sometimes. Uh, so it, it takes a long time to get into the uh, maybe how teachers uh, uses, use them at school level. So, I know it should be faster, maybe a way to uh, this type of research is used uh, by teachers. Uh, but uh, I think it's difficult. For me, it's difficult. I am concentrated mostly on research and uh, not very much on how this is, um, uh, is, um, yeah, is um, used by, by teachers, uh, although here in Chile, I, I, I give some seminars to teachers uh, on, on, on these strategies, but it's very local in a sense. It's not, it's not something that uh, is spread in, in other part of the world. So 
It's one of the things <laughs> that I know it's very local for you. We have readers from all over the world, um, as far away as Saudi Arabia to local to the United States. And so our hope with these series is that we highlight research that matters to educators and to students. And your study caught our eye because it has long been a conversation in teacher lounges about how much kids highlight and are they really retaining the information. So I think hearing about this, reading your study, listening to reading the meta-analysis and saying there are certain things we can do to make it more effective is super important. So I just want to thank you for giving us your time. Guys, he's all the way in Chile. I'm local in Georgia, uh, in the United States. And so just to give his time, talk about his research. We would love to have you back on. Um, what we probably will do in the next couple of months is bring several researchers around to talk about some of the topics and to have some bigger discussions. But we're just excited for the next six months of the lineup that we have that's coming to talk about the research. So Dr. Ponce, is there anything else that you didn't get to talk about that you feel like is super important to this research? No, just to thank you and uh, for the invitation. And uh, I, I'm very glad to to be able to talk to people who are uh, doing the, the 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 real work <laughs> with the students. When I, when I go to school, I I I, I really admire the uh, teachers because uh, they they are doing a very hard uh, work, and particularly here in Chile, they have uh, sometimes uh, 45, uh, 40, 45 students in a classroom. Uh, uh, are still very difficult to manage. And um, so I understand uh, the difficulties they have uh, and they still manage to um, make uh, the students uh, reach. So that, that's uh, an impressive, an impressive job. So I admire you very much and thank you very much for, for, for the invitation. I can, I can hear you. Sorry. Uh, thanks, guys, for following us. Please visit us all on all um, social media, theeducatorsroom.com. Read our articles. We have research. We have over 3,000 articles on all things teaching and learning um, and really just a hub for all things education. Our next um, guest we will announce next week. It'll be happening in May. And so we want to make sure that you guys come and you guys listen to it. Um, Dr. Ponce, we thank you for your time. We hope to have you back thank pretty you. soon. Um, guys, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.